guys welcome to my newest video I have Sam here with me I don't know you guys are probably not used to seeing him on my sit down videos is this nope. the first sit down video you've done nope is this the first is this the first sit down video you've done nope what video did you do a long time ago okay so anyway, today's video is all about the trial and tribulations of uh, buying a horse because if you've been following our journey to our first horse, um, you'll know that it is not the easiest process. It is not the most fun process. In fact, I really don't even ever want to see an advertised horse again. How did you feel about our search for our horses? Me too. Terrible. Yeah, it is so hard and we're going to tell you why a right now. A lot of work. you're super excited you know exactly what you want and you start looking you look through all the classified ads there are ads everywhere there are specific horse sites that you can look on there are Facebook pages you can look on there are ads everywhere for horses so obviously this is gonna be a cinch no um, first of all you can't just buy a horse it doesn't matter how much money you have you cannot just go out there and buy a horse okay maybe if you have unlimited money you could probably go out there and buy a horse but I don't even think you could. It has to be the right fit. For example, the kind of horse that we needed, what had to be slow, had to be a beginner safe, had to be a schoolmaster, a horse to teach us and show us the ropes, a horse that was super forgiving because we're beginners. A horse just like Sabrina. You'd think that would be easy to find, right? No. You also have other things that you have to factor in. You have to factor in the price, the location, how far you're gonna go to find a horse. Before we started looking for horses, I thought it was as simple as picking the color, picking the height, um, and picking the price range you want. Before we were even ready to buy horses over the years, we must have bought like 50 horses, hypothetically, looking on ads and stuff, right? I was looking for a horse, I looked uh, mainly for the color the girls wanted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what I started with. Well, we wanted a gray horse, you guys. Like That is what we looked for. We looked for the prettiest horse you could get, right? Right. And then it was, you're going to get the horse that we find for you. And then it was, it doesn't matter what color it is, it doesn't matter what size. As long as it's got four legs and can jump, good we're good. good. <laughs> right? First, you have to figure out what you need in a horse, and then you have to figure out what size of a horse, because clearly we had size limitations because the horses were for our children. Um, and we also had price limitations like we knew that we needed a horse that was in a certain price range for us to be comfortable um and in the end we were kind of like we're gonna pay whatever it takes to find the horse that we want because it was so rare i'm gonna tell you right now why it was so hard for us to find our horse um first of all beginner safe horses are hard to come by they are everybody wants them the market it's a seller's market let me tell you on beginner safe horses um unfortunately the competition is fierce in the beginner horse category because um, school horse schools, riding schools are also looking for beginner safe horses. So and there are a lot of riding schools out there. People starting up riding schools, um, established riding schools, they're all looking for perfect um, beginner safe schoolmaster type horses. Exactly what we were looking for. So we had to be able to find a horse and get there before the horse riding schools got there. And that was a feat because um, uh, they always got there before us. Didn't they always get there before us? The other thing was the other thing is that there are a lot of brokers out there, and because of our price range, our price range was also um, sh is also shared with all the brokers and with all the schools. So um, anything that we could afford, they could afford, and then we had to make sure we got there, found the ad before them, and got there before them. Um, a broker is um, a person who uh, buys and sells for uh, buys and sells horses. So they will buy a horse um, at a low price and then resell it. There's a lot of those out there on our search. Yeah, I met so, a lot of brokers and a lot of false ads. Since um, uh, buying and selling horses is a job for a broker, it seemed like they lived on the ads. So I would go on Facebook and a beautiful, perfect horse with us would appear and 15 brokers would be ahead of me on the ad. And I'd be like, great, <laughs> not getting that horse. 
so you finally find a beginner safe horse it's not the color you wanted it's probably it's a it's close enough in size but it and close enough in price range and you finally beat out all the schools and all the brokers and you finally get to go and see the horse only to discover that the owner's idea of a beginner safe horse and your idea of a, a beginner safe horse not the same we've seen beginner safe horses that have never had a saddle on that have never been ridden we have seen a beginner safe horses that have ridden off with our kids off into the woods <laughs> we, uh, beginner safe. yeah and it was beginner safe we tried beginner safe horses where we've gotten to the barn and the horse is covered in sweat it's inside no no tack on it but it is sweating all on its neck and all around where the girth goes and underneath the saddle on the back and we've said like hey why is he sweating and and we've been told things like oh it's kind of hot in the barn <laughs> like it can be scary trying a beginner safe horse can be a scary experience um, we've seen beginner safe horses that have sat in fields for two years and never been ridden. We've seen beginner safe horses that are rideable but never had a saddle on. Yeah, so <laughs> so we could look at 20 horses and the ones that actually match our criteria could be one. And that is not even an exaggeration because that's exactly what happened to us. We basically bought the first horse that met the most of our criteria because we knew that getting to that point again was going to be so difficult. Another um, issue that we had when we were buying horses was that because of our job and because we're on YouTube, we had to weed through a lot of fake ads. Um, you're probably wondering what the heck is a fake ad well um, we encountered a lot of ads that were created by young kids that were advertising beginner safe um, horses perfect height perfect size perfect price um, and the horse looked um, and the horses looked amazing like these amazing horses that you would probably pay over twenty thousand dollars for and they were being advertised as kid friendly amazing safe horses in our area in our price range and um, we were able to tell really quickly that the ads were made by young kids um, and and that they didn't even own the horses anyways if you're looking at ads and it seems too good to be true it probably is too good to be true and another thing about looking for horses that we didn't mention is uh, word of mouth plays a big part because uh, when we found Gabby's horse that was pretty much word of mouth. Uh, somebody told us that this person had a horse for sale and that she never really advertised it anywhere yet and we're able to get that horse. Yeah, and we jumped on it. it. Word of mouth and knowing people, but we're new to the horse world, so we don't know that many people. But actually, now that we've been in the horse world or we've owned a horse for a few months um, and we've been making horse videos, we actually are growing a bit of a connection in the horse world, and that's been really fabulous. But Sam's right. The minute we somebody sent us a message saying about Storm, and we were on it. I like I sent messages. I phoned her. I'm like, we're coming. You tell us when, and we'll come. Two days later, we were the second people to go and see him. And it, we Sam wanted to trial him and see how it would go, and she said no. And I was like, buying him. We're buying him. Like we're not we're buying him and buying from somebody that you trust and that you know is an amazing horse person and word of mouth like she has an amazing reputation um that made things feel so much better for us like that was so much well, kind better. of because i didn't really i didn't really know her sam doesn't trust so i don't easy. trust people as much and i, I was still skeptical that's why we did obviously we did the horse the vet check right yeah so you have to do a vet check anyways, but just to be safe. Yeah, yeah. Because you don't really know, even if yeah. somebody's in the horse world. Because a lot of people told us a lot of things that were not true. A lot. And a lot of that stuff was interpretation, so I can't really blame them. But there were some things that were um, outrightly not true when we were looking for horses. It was a scary, scary situation. It was scary putting our kids on horses that we didn't know. It was scary going to people's houses and meeting them. And I should say right here that our instructor um, wanted to go with us on every horse trial. She's really busy and she said, okay, that's great. I'll come with you on Friday. And we said, well, we're going to go tomorrow. <laughs> because we kind of wanted, like, it just was so much pressure and we just wanted to 
get a horse and we weren't prepared to wait 16 years to get a horse and um, so even though she wanted to be there with us every single time we kind of pushed off on our own and did our own thing and um, likely we would have bought a horse way sooner if we had waited for her on every trial um, and likely we she would have weeded out a lot of the things before we even went there if we had listened to her but we didn't well, we listened to her a lot, though. We uh, actually we did, though. I mean, yeah. We actually went to see the horses, but we forwarded the videos to her to watch. Yeah, we took video on our phone and, and we us. sent them to her. And she was so gracious that even though she was like busy and working, and she uh, stopped and looked at videos that we sent her, and she told us no. Like she said, nope, too fast. Um, nope, too much horse for you guys. Like she told us, like we never went to a trial um, completely blind and, and ever. Like she was there, even though it was on and the And even even before we even seen the horse, yeah, we were looking at ads. Yeah, and we would send her the photos in the video. Yeah, and for her she to look sent at us videos, and she sent us photos. Like she <laughs> looked for a horse as much as we looked for a horse. Um, it's just that we didn't like she sent us videos and sent us ads and she helped us She's instrumental in us getting storm like every time we took her with us though. We ended up buying a horse yeah, the two, times. two times the two times we took her we ended up buying a horse so um, Yeah, I wanted to in interject that because a lot of you guys don't know a lot of the behind scenes the things that go on behind um, the camera when we're you know that involve other people especially so I wanted to tell you guys that, but anyway, that is it for this video. <coughs> well, I just want to say that use your coach if you're looking to buy a horse, if you have a coach. Do not do what we did because you, it is so hard. Use your coach. Your coach can look for a horse for you, even though we were in a bit of a rush to find one, I think. Yeah, yeah, live and learn, you guys. And if we had to do it all over again, we probably do it exactly the same way because I have zero patience for waiting. Waiting is the hardest thing that's ever happened to me. What's this video about? Um, what? What's this video about? <sighs> Trials and tribulations of buying a horse. Okay. I'm not sure what we're supposed to talk about. Okay. But anyways, <laughs> I just want to add trials and tribulations of buying a horse one of the problems we have right now is you want to look locally and not out of province i.e don't go to another province like quebec and try and figure out how you're going to get the horse back yeah but a lot of people it's <laughs> i mean this is at our price range and at our level of riding how it is done for how we did it and it's just for us there are other pe I know, people but you want to look at that spend hundreds of thousands of dollars on horses and travel to europe and travel all over the world looking for horses all across north america like people are not as limited not everybody's as limited like us he's like limited who are you calling limited i'm just saying <laughs> You might not want to look for a horse out of province because it's really expensive to transport a horse. Yeah, so Either that's from another, another issue. country, unless you have the money to do that. We don't have the money to do that. Pretty sure that's what I just said. But even if it's only four hours away, it still could cost you thousands of dollars to get that horse to your barn. Yeah. Anyway, uh, that is it for today. Thanks for watching this video. Um, give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And let me know if you want more um, Sam in our extra videos. Yes, and I want to do a video on brokers because I tell you, every time I met a broker, I could tell they were lying right away about everything. Okay, that's a whole other video. That's a whole that's new a video. That's a whole other video, but that and is it. I know people are going to get mad about that video, but yeah, and it's going it to all be, be on you. Anyway, that is it for today. We'll see you guys in our next video. Thanks for watching. And don't forget to make sure to hit that subscribe button down below.